and welcome to Marinsky March 2023, where every day in March we make a sausage recipe out of one of Adam and Stanley Marinsky's books. Last year we did home production of quality meats and sausage, which I think is one of the best sausage books out there. Stella gives you the how and why behind what you're doing in sausage making. But this year we're doing recipes out of the new book, 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes which is a gift to us sausage makers and meat enthusiasts. Adam and Stan have traveled across Europe and North America for the last 20 years compiling recipes and they put it all into this jumbo book. What's even better is Stanley has sent me five copies to give away to you guys over the course of the month and all you got to do to get qualified is leave a comment in the videos and I'll find you and I'll send you a copy if you're one of the lucky winners. So, without any further ado, let's get into 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes by Adam and Stanley Marinsky. Hello and welcome to another glorious day in March. And on this glorious day in Marinsky March, we are making the Blanquette de Beleres from page 123 of 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes by Adam and Stanley Marinsky. This sausage hails from Spain and it falls into the, con the head cheese category or jelly, meat jelly category. Um, it is described as Blanquette. Blanquest de Boleris is a short cooked pork sausage popular in the Balearic Islands and eastern regions of Spain. The sausage is often added to stews or served with rice. That sounds pretty nice at these eastern islandic regions of Spain. So I have all the meat here. It has some really neat spices in it. It's got some pine nuts and cinnamon and it's going to be a pretty neat sausage. Um, so first step first is it calls to cook split pork heads in 95 degrees Celsius water until meat separates from bones. Recover while the meat is still warm. If this isn't the first head cheese video I put up this March, you will, you will know that I don't have any pork heads for the month of March. So what we're doing to replace pork heads is using pork hocks. I have two pork hocks here, one off a hind leg, one off a front leg. Doesn't matter what leg you get them off, they are interchangeable. And then I'm gonna throw some pork skin that we saved off a of belly in with them. And then when we get that boiled to the point where it just falls off the bone, we are going to cool it down, separate all the gristle out. We're gonna do that. It just says recover the meat. Maybe we'll get a little bit of grisly stuff in there. And then we're going to grind it with this pork belly and pork fat, then stuff it and mix it and serve it warm. But first steps first, to the water. All right, look at that. Look at all these different head cheeses we have going on. Have you seen this video yet? Have you seen this video yet? This one's for this video. So. Just enough to submerge these hawks in the water. Perfect. Chuck them in there. We don't add any salts or spices or anything. Some recipes you can. You can add some herbs and stuff. It starts to pick up the flavor. Here's our skin. Simulate that head. So I don't have a lid for this one. The lids are being used up. Oh, maybe I do. Stand by for lid. Okay, have the lid. We're just gonna boil it for, till it's tender, till it rips apart. So I'm gonna, Keep an eye on these over the next 45 minutes to an hour is about as long as it's gonna take and then whichever one's ready first is the one I'll be working on. Okay, and now time to pull the meat out for the Blanquette de did Blares. All right. Yeah, that meat's ready to come off the bone. While that's cooling down, we can grind through our other meat. Okay, so there's our steaming pile of pork hocks and skin. While that cools off just enough for me to work with it, I have to grind this through a quarter inch plate or six and a half millimeter plate anyways. So we'll run that through while that chills. And this just come out of the freezer by the way, so it's a little bit stiff, which is nice for the gr sake of the grinder. So there's our pork belly and pork fat ground up, ready to receive our cooked pork meat and then be spiced up, stuffed, rested and cooked. So the recipe says to remove gristle from this. 
Doesn't say anything about uh, the head, or the skin, I should say. A pork head would have skin on it, so I'm not sure if I'm supposed to leave it in or take it out. So I'm gonna leave it in, because I think that's gonna help uh, help with creating a, a gelatin, or the jelly, or the cheese, of the head cheese. And it also doesn't say if this is supposed to be run through the grinder. I think you're just kind of supposed to shred it, so I'm gonna shred it up. Pull it apart as if it's kind of a pulled pork. Here, that bit of skin's got too much hair on it for me. So there's the skin kind of mushed up. Now we'll take these pork hocks. You can see the the meat is falling away from the bone there, so that's about right. Okay, you don't want any big chunks of gristle in it though. Oh, look at that! Just look at that fall apart. I could eat that as is. I like a I like a pork hock. Yum yum yum. I'm just gonna do it outside the the bin so I can pull that gristle out. It's been cooked good because the bones just pull apart. This would be a pretty classy head cheese probably. It's got some nice meat in it and uh, no gristle at all whatsoever. So it'd be an uptown. There's the ground pork and it's about to meet the cooked meat. So in it goes and we'll grab our spices. Now in this recipe, it's got a little bit of a unsafe food step in it. You're supposed to mix these together you know, you're supposed to let it cool down a little bit. Actually, it doesn't say to let it cool down a little bit. So you just mix them together and then let them sit in the refrigerator overnight. But you are introducing warm meat that's come right out of the cooker into this cold meat. So it's probably gonna bring that raw meat temperature up before it comes back down. So it's a little bit of a safety concern. So we're not gonna let it, uh, I'm not actually gonna marinate it overnight. I'm just gonna mix this up really good. And then we're gonna cook it with the other head cheeses. So. Ooh, that's gonna be quite the interesting one. Pine nuts and cinnamon is the big smeller in this one, the big factor in this one. I think if I can convince my wife to eat a head cheese, it will be this head cheese. Now, I don't think there's enough raw meat in here to get protein extraction out of it. So, I wouldn't worry about doing the old sticky test with this. Head cheeses kinda of don't quite follow the same rules as typical sausage making, kind of a different class. Okay, so I think the spices have been mixed up good enough. Now we're gonna hook up or stuff it into the manual sausage stuffer and put them into 29, 32 millimeter hot casings. Be a little itty bitty head cheeses. I'm used to seeing big sandwich size stuff. That's why I like Marinsky March. I get to do new things. You get to go on the learning experience with me. Here we go. Got the first little bit that comes out. Oh. Kind of large textured stuff sometimes will give you air pocket issues. Now we're going to stuff it a little bit loose because we're going to have to twist these into links and those large particles are sometimes hard to twist around if you've got her too tight. Now we're going to do them into 8 inch links. So yeah, I recommend stuffing these loosely for sure. I'm going to twist one, two. The Blanquet de Belerez is ready to be poached. I am gonna give it a couple hours in the cooler because I have to make up one more sausage before we do all this water cooking. So it is gonna to get to marinate for a little bit, not the 24, but for one hour. Okay, in this pot, I have the Brunswicky head cheese and I have the Laboto Wurst. And we're going to add the Blanquette de Belerez, the Spanish head cheese sausage. So here these guys go. It says to cook them in there for a half hour, but I'm gonna cook them until the internal temperature hits 72. I'm gonna pull them out. I'm gonna poke a couple holes in these with this thermopen that I got from Roy Davis. There we go. Sink, sink my darlings. Okay, I wanna make sure the blanquet is submerged. Just about need a bigger pot, but there we go. It will stay in there until they're cooked. I'll pull them out and give them a little ice bath. There's our pot of head cheese. It's time to probe them and see how they're doing. Okay, find the ugly end one here on our little guy. Go deep. Oh yeah, it's at 170. So that is over 72 degrees Celsius. So we can pull that guy out and start chilling them off. And those big ones will probably be shortly behind it. There we go. All right, we'll just give it a little cool rinse here and then pop it in the cooler. All right, best part of the video, in my opinion, the eating, the Blanquette de Belerez, the fruit of our labors we're about to taste. So this one, I think, was the one that's usually added to stews or served with rice. I'm not gonna make a stew or rice this morning, but we are gonna 
dive into one of these guys, see if we got a good uh, suspension. Feels like it. All right. Oh yeah. Looks like a little mini itty bitty head cheese. Usually head cheeses are in large diameters, typically is what I see over here, but looks like we did good. There we go. <clears throat> little chunks of meat suspended amongst the grind and the gelatin. And you can see those pine nuts in there. I'm looking forward to those pine nuts. That'll be, I've never had something crunchy in a head cheese before, other than teeth. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I've never found tooth. Okay, I'll peel this little bit of casing off. I expect this to have a pretty unique flavor profile. It's very different from what you'd see in what I know as head cheese. I believe this had cinnamon and cloves and the pine nuts. I'm gonna slice off a piece. Oh wow, wham, very aromatic herbs, like the cinnamon and cloves and nutmeg, hit you right away. And then there's nice chunks of pork meat in there and the gelatin and the, the pine nuts have kind of lost their crunch, but they give it kind of a earthy nutty taste. That is very, very good. Very different from what I would call a head cheese and what I've had before, but I sure like that. Hmm. Enough to have another one right away. I'm not sure how that'll work with stew and rice. Well, I guess, maybe, but that's yummy. Pretty unique, I don't know what you'd serve it with. Other than just straight up the snack on. But, well that was fun. Something new, something way out of my normal. The Blanquette de Boleras. I hope you liked it. I hope you like seeing new things. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'm gonna make a different sausage like this, <coughs> excuse me, every day all March long out of 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes for Marinsky March. Thanks for watching guys. Take care. Mm. I love Marinsky March. Yum.